Good morning. It's time for Healing with the Blues. Healing with the Blues. That's right, I'm healing with the blues. I've got nothing left to lose. That's why I'm healing with the blues. Such a pain inside. The love that's there for me, I have denied. I've never had the blues this long, this deep, this wide. That's why I'm healing with the blues. Good morning, everybody. It's time for Healing with the Blues. And you know what that means. That means healing's going to happen. Even if you're watching the replay, there's going to be healing happening for you. So I encourage you to put comments in, to participate, to put yourself forward in this group, because this is a private group. Remember, not everybody's going to see this. Just the people in the group are going to see this. And you can invite your friends and have them fill out the three questions and they can get instant access to this group, but they have to answer those questions. Hey, healing with the blues happened because, you know, about 28 years ago, coming up tomorrow, my uh, first son was stillborn and I had an amazing healing experience through blues music. I was finishing up chiropractic college and was going to start my practice and I did all that but in the midst of that was this huge change in my life and as I was asking for healing just you know source put me anywhere I need to be for healing I found myself at uh, the Mississippi Valley Blues Fest and the blind boys of Alabama put a healing on me boy I came out of there different than how I went in and uh, years later, started our own band with my husband, Ed. He's my bass player. And we have been witnessing healing with performances. I witness healing here in the office on this beautiful table right here. And also over uh, the phone and online with clients that I work with all over the world doing healing. And what does that mean? And that means they're open to the possibility of healing. And so we just allow that to happen. We get in the energy and the, the vibration of healing and use a few little techniques here and there, whatever source is giving me, and we get some healing done. So when I ask you to comment or put hashtag replay in the comments, if you're watching this later, that means that you are saying yes to the healing that's available. And it also means that you're going to have an experience here. And that's what we want you to have. We want you to have that instant experience. And today, I'm so grateful to have Judy Wong with me. She's um, an international educator, consultant, life coach, and speaker. She spent 50 years in performing in visual arts and over 40 years in various education and business industries. She is a vibrational energy healer. Hmm, sound familiar? <laughs> Published poet, a certified Silva Method practitioner, and holds a master's in teaching English to speakers of other languages. Judy is on a mission for those like her who are over 60, 70, 80, or 90 to raise their fountain of life and live life for the living. Thank you so much for being here, Judy. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, it's a, it's my pleasure. I, 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 you know, I love it. I love, I love that you use music. For healing, mm -hmm. um, it's 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 a, it really is a a a major healing thing, and and especially for me, because um, as you know, this is my third marriage, and my first one was quite traumatic because my first left me homeless, jobless, and twenty thousand dollars in his debt. Mm -hmm which was pretty terrifying to be in in your 30s. <laughs> and um, I remember back then it was it was while I was I was spending a fortune that I didn't have on on therapists and it just wasn't helping. Mm -hmm. But I would go to my vocal coach who was a holistic healer and I would <laughs> sing for an hour and I came out 
miraculously so much <laughs> isn't that healed. just the truth it's the I'm vibration telling you, it's the it was it, out. It's, it was it was amazing and it's like and every cell in your body sits up and takes notice yeah i did i ditched a the therapist and just you know made my vote and then it was years later when um uh after oof, a 25 year marriage to my kid's dad he decided you know life life is better wherever and you know he asked for his get out of jail free card and i i was sort of gone again and uh here i was this older mom in my 50s my late 50s um being a single mom raising because i had my children very late so uh, here i'm raising teenagers mm -hmm. trying to put three teenagers through college as a single older mom and realized I was all they had left. So I put myself through college too. All three of us. Why on, not? Everybody on, go. <laughs> on a hope and a prayer. My, my, I'm serious. We had like no money. So it was on a hope and a prayer to get through that. And I remember one of my best friends from when I was a kid, he said, honey, why don't you come out and sing? And I said, no, I don't do that stuff anymore. And he says, sweetie, you got to do this. And, and I went out and I, I very hesitantly you know, went out and I went singing and he's like, see, don't you feel better? And he goes, are you in that therapist again? I said, well, you know, <laughs> and he goes, honey, you come out every week and everything that's that you're you're dealing with, you sing about it. Right. I said, really? And he goes, come on, you feel better. I said, yeah, actually I do. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. It's, it's a, one of those things where if you can get the person to open up and let that out, the best vocal coaches and voice teachers I've had are just spiritual beings helping us have our voice. And isn't yeah. that really what it's all about? Anyway. And I realized, I realized, you know, as, as, mm -hmm. as time went on and, and, and I started embracing my gift that I have had literally my whole life, but I never mm -hmm. sort of paid attention to it. Um, but I realized as I started going along that that's how I heal. Yeah. That's how I heal others because I see the vibration. I feel it. You know, this is, this is me. And that's how I've been my whole life. And that's the one thing that like has been keeping me mode, you know, going through the ups and downs of life because that's just the way life is you know it's mm -hmm. it's, it's not a one-way tunnel it's not a stage it's not a chapter it's not a you know it's it's a journey it goes up it goes down just like yeah. running the hills of this countryside you know well we say like homeostasis is like this it's always right. moving always, exactly always uh, uh, adapting to changing situations and the only time you're a flat line is when, you're, when you're gone, right? So, which so is why my point. dad always said, "Celebrate those birthdays because it's better than the alternative." <laughs> Absolutely, the, the whole point of what we're doing in healing is to help people manage that in a way that they get the joy out of it, right? So, so you know, and seeing that that they they can attract or you know repel whatever it is that they want or don't want in their life. Oh, I've talked um, a little bit about this before, about desire. And one of the things that um, Viana Stabile talks about, she's the um, mother of theta healing, is that desire is something that's put there in your heart. And sire means father and D means of. So your desires are coming from source. Right. And it's not that you um, have to have different desires than other people. It's that when you put attention on what you are passionate about, what drives you, what makes you feel good, then you can absolutely have this experience of being in that flow of energy. That's and right. the title of our talk today that I put up was that all modalities can lead to truth. And we were just talking about this before we went live about how there's so many people are always saying, oh, do you do this? Do you do that? Is that quantum hypnosis? Is it this? Is it, you know, um, this EMDR? What, what are all these things? And what I 
generally say to people is, well, I know lots of different techniques. Most of them, you won't know what they are called. And some of them I'm getting directly as I'm working on people. Yeah. So being a conduit and a good channel for that information is really the most important thing rather than learning and being certified. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, it, there's, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, so the I was learning saying, part is learning to get yourself out of the way so that it can right work. well that's it you know and that's that's sort of how I work with people I mean and, and then I realized that's how I've always worked with that's how I worked with children when I was teaching mm -hmm. children that's how I worked with adults when I was teaching adults I basically teach them to get out of their own way right. because you know like one of when I was teaching children because I always taught I, I actually created um a way of teaching academics using the arts because that's what I was. I was an artist. And why wouldn't and, you? <laughs> you know? And uh, I I learned a long time that they are so interrelated to academics. And more Absolutely. importantly, you know, um when you I hate society, the way they 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 target children and they put them into little stupid categories like you're disabled or you're learning blah 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 and yeah. it just really makes me very angry because there's nothing wrong with them nope. they're not broken these children are not disabled god knows they don't think they're disabled only you do and and the cool thing was the way i was teaching them because i taught them using arts it leveled the playing field mm -hmm. It leveled the playing field for them so that they could learn any which way came the right way for them. Exactly. Because, like I tell all my clients, it's like every which way is the right way. There's no such thing as the wrong way. Right. And the thing that's so interesting to me about that is that we have been socialized and culturized to make ourselves wrong on so many levels. Yeah. And then we inherit that as well from ancestral energy that lands on us. Um, you know, it's sort of like, how can we ever get out of that? But we can. And yeah. it's really, e it's, it's a lot easier than people think. And it's also one of those things that you have to let go of any preconceived notions that you have about it. You know, I was just watching this this um, program this morning on cold fusion and how the guys who discovered how to do that were basically run out of town on a rail because <laughs> they were thinking differently. They were doing things differently. And because the powers that be that are controlling the money didn't want anything to happen to their nest egg of, you know, digging things out of the ground and burning them for fuel. You know, it, it, when you think about it, it's the most archaic kind of science you can think of digging things out of the ground and burning them for fuel. I mean, that's like caveman stuff, right? You but think it, it's evolved past that, but when they find they can make money at it, then any other thought is got to be run down. So these people have been made to like be have people think of them as less than because they weren't, you know, in a published peer reviewed journal. They, I mean, they think uh, of themselves as broken. Yeah. Or and then, not, not, you know, that's the whole, that's and the, whole. Te yeah. The techniques that we do, can you do a double blind study on quantum healing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that'll work. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's the whole point of like, you know, you, as you know, like I'm, I'm trying to teach my generation because I am a lot older than I look and I know that, but I'm trying to teach my generation. Stop calling yourselves retired because you're not. Yes. Stop calling yourselves, you know, old and that life has passed you by because we're not for crying out loud, you know, and, and, you know, they're like, but I can't, I can't, everything's always, I can't, I can't, but you know, and that's, that's that, all that bullshit stuff, you know, that like, excuse me, French, but you know, that those layers, <laughs> those layers of crapola exactly. that, that people have been laying on us. And think about it. If you know you live 60, 70, 80 years, that's a lot of crapola to be to be buried alive under, you know. Well, and yeah. and and it's like the cold fusion thing, it's dealing with the core. Yeah. Because you know, inside 
there's a reason you managed to make it through the ups and downs all these years. There's a reason you, you've just managed to keep going and, and finding ways. And, yeah. and, and for some bizarre reason, when you get to my age, everybody's so busy telling us that we're broken and we're old and, and it's all over and give it up and stop. And it's, it's like, you know, crazy. Yeah, it is. It's kind of crazy. And they're so busy telling us this nonsense. We actually forget. Yeah. That like the cold fusion thing in the ground, there's that core in the deep, 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 deep part of us. And that beautiful light, that pure essence of us is what's still burning bright. Mm -hmm. and, and the trick is let it the bloody out. You know, just turn up the fountain. Like you do your your faucet, turn up the spigot and let it out. Because it's just like, you know, wow, when it starts burning, all these wonderful ideas come back out, all these wonderful possibilities come back out. And and yeah. you know, your health improves. It's it's really wild, but your health improves, your abundance yeah. start flowing again. Exactly. Because you just let it come. But you know, if you close the door on it. If you've been if you've been taught over and over again that you don't have worth when you get to a certain age, if everybody in your family feels that way, if you believe these lies, that's what's going to show up in your life. Yeah. What we have to do is help people to believe the truth. And the truth is, is that you're alive until you're dead. Right. So let's get on living. Let's yeah. actually let that happen. I mean, and you know, I, I yeah. actually had a, a um, <laughs> young man the other day. He was saying to me, he's like, oh, but you know, I mean, you know, we're only going to go to like, we're 80. I'm like, why? why? Don't tell my dad that. Oh my I gosh. Said, excuse me. 90 excuse at the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> excuse me, but why? I mean, granted right. my parents' generation, you know, didn't live very long, but that was back then. And this is now. And now we have science. Now we have wonderful people like my my son, who's the biomechanical and biomedical engineer who, who's, you know, creating science. Right. I mean, now if you turn 100, everybody's like, OK, no big deal. You know, <laughs> I mean, I remember when uh, I was a kid. No, that's if, a big deal. <laughs> yeah. When, when I was a kid, if somebody turned 100, we had a big ass party, you know. But now it's sort of like, oh, okay, you know, but if somebody turned 110, it's like, oh my God, let's have a big party. So like, who's to say in like 20 years, look, as my son says, science yeah. is marching on so fast and evolution is marching on so fast. Who's to say in 20 years, it's 110 is the normal. Let's right? just let, yeah, let's just let. So why are you worried about your death? Go. I don't well, understand. Yeah. Why is everybody obsessing with their death? You know, it's it's about your life. So obsessed with your life. That's right. <laughs> Much one nicer the, thing to obsess about. Exactly. Honestly. <laughs> one of the one of my favorite stories is is of my my client who I haven't I haven't met her yet in person, but we were working over the phone and she had a problem with her hip and we had taken care of her grief upset and what she had buried about grief. And then she's like, well, you know, I have this hip problem. And so I said, well, let's clear the hip problem up. So we did that and she felt great. Oh, there's no pain. How did you do that? I'm like, well, how isn't really important, but that it's gone <laughs> is good because how I could tell, I could t teach you that, but it would take a long time. But, um, but the fact is, is that, you know, she turned 89 while I was working on her. And so, you know, you don't need, there's no cutoff date here no. for healing. There's no cutoff date. My dad will tell you that too. He moved out here um, from the East coast to Iowa in 2015 and ha has been feeling the best he's felt in his life. He comes in every week and we have, you know, healing and we, talk about the past a little bit and get things cleared up. But a lot of it doesn't have to do with divulging your story and your secrets or whatever it is that you have going on inside of you. It's about letting it go. Yes. It's about dissolving that connection between your physiology, which is your feelings 
because your feelings create your physiology and what you really want to be and do and have and in your life, you know, uh, do you want to be happy and healthy and you don't have to be walking in a, a, exactly. be in a wheelchair. You, you, can, you can decide. Even if you get those kinds of limitations in your life, like people are going to come up with things that happen like that. How are you going to deal with it in a spiritual way, which is energetic, that's going to inform how you feel about it and help you deal with the negative feelings? We don't have bad feelings. We only have negative feelings and positive feelings. Well, and so when we can move that needle on that, then that then things change drastically. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's yeah. um, <clears throat> somebody was saying to me in another group um, and she was like, I don't get it because we were watching another mentor one day. And she said, he says, I we, I, we need to let go. I said, yes, you do. She goes, he says, you need to let go, but take responsibility. How could you do less and take responsibility? I said, because mm -hmm. I think you're confusing doing with responsibility. Because the truth is, when you do less, you know, the truth is like, if you want something really badly, right? Mm -hmm. The universe is kind of like a push me, pull me. Job. Right. <laughs> you know, when we were kids, we used to have like push me, pull me toys. Well, it's kind of like a push me, pull me toy. You know, the more, the more you say, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You're pushing and pushing and pushing. But you know what? You're, you're leaving no room. Yeah. So you're like doing this to the universe. And the universe is like, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, but you're not giving me any space. So sometimes you have to actually step back and do less. Because yeah, when you're doing that. less and letting go, you actually open up space. Yeah, you make room for source to come in. There's a great exactly. prayer that we talk about in the, and we're doing a book study on this. For those of you who don't know, you can join our book study. It happens <laughs> We're, we do it the fourth Thursday of the month. We're doing Dynamic Laws of Prayer by Catherine Ponder. And it helps you understand about letting go. So the prayer of letting go is, I release you. I loose you and let you go. I let go and let God have its way in your life. You could say source if you don't like God, but that's that that's just wording. But it's really about declaring that I'm done. I'm done yeah. trying to fix this and trying to like get in there and figure it all out. Like right. you don't need to do that. It's and not to say it out is way overrated. You know, it's not to say it's not to say that you shouldn't say like I I I'm I'm going to have this I have this house coming. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Mm -hmm. I have this house coming. But then like let the universe help you step back see it so it's like yes you are doing something you are saying you can't just not do anything because you know it's like I, I i said to another person the other day angels will show up they do show up mm -hmm. but they need to be asked they won't come unless you ask them to come yeah and, and then you just need to get out of the way and receive right too. that's the law they won't come unless you ask. But if you ask, they're always there. They yeah. are always there. And and I yeah. never, you know, I, I'll tell you, I never thought that concept was true when I was younger. But years ago, during my first marriage, um, my mother-in-law was failing. She was in her uh, 80s. And it was a very troubling family who was filled with lots of problems. Mm -hmm. And here was this woman left out in the cold, basically. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm, I'm not financially in a place where I could take care of her. Um, and everybody else has walked away from her. And I won't do that. And I'm like, but I need to reach. And she wanted to go home to Italy. I was trying to find a place for her to be that was in my opinion, mm -hmm. a safe space, mm -hmm. you know, not an institution, but a safe space because she had severe Alzheimer's mm. and here she was left in a hospital, left to 
rot kind of thing. And I thought, no, this can't be. And I remember she was, she was a, a, a devout Catholic. And I reached out to the Catholic church. I reached as far as Rome and everybody kept closing the doors. And I said, this is not right. I reached to my churches, which I'm a Presbyterian, and they kept opening doors, but still couldn't move her along. And finally, I got to a point, I said, I need to help her. Please send me a sign. Send me a way to help her. And this Irish nun came out of the blue from the village where she was dumped in upstate. And she said, I know who your mother is. And the priest and I have been seeing her. Um, let me help you. And I went, okay, I need, I need help. And she said, this is what you do. You know, she, she walked me through how to mm -hmm. release her so that, you know, this angel could help her. And she got her placed in a wonderful holistic, spiritual place um, across the border in Connecticut. And then years later, when she passed, I was like, I, I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. This woman had was penniless at that point because her family had wiped her out clean. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I can't do this. Like, she needs a proper, a pro you know, she lived a really spiritual life. She needs a proper crossing. And wouldn't you know, that angel popped up again. And she said, not a problem. And I said, but I don't have, we don't have. She said, I will find her space in our churches with the nuns, mm. our church's space. Mm. And I went, really? She says, and we will give her a full mass because that's what she always Beautiful. lived with. And I was like, she says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's beautiful. And I thought, oh my God, this woman, I didn't know who she was. Yeah. She came out of nowhere, but she was the angel. And I realized she truly was. Thank you so much for sharing that, Judy. I, I try to help people understand that asking is not the wrong thing to do asking <laughs> is the right thing to do hey can you tell us about this offer that you're making for people i'm going to put it in the comments right here can you so tell us about that? as you know um my my thing is i want people to live um and so what i have there it's a link to what i call like the first step because the truth is you know i i like to think of it as by my age or so and i am in my late i am in my 60s <laughs> you're in your early 60s yes mid 60s we're the we're you're only a couple years older than i am so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not old no you're older than me <laughs> i'm older and and my husband is is 69 and he's gonna be 70 soon um but the thing is that i like to think of it as it's a cocoon mm -hmm. that we've kind of buried ourselves under. And I realized that like 15 years ago when I started my my journey towards embracing this side of me. Um, and um, it took me a while to to unbury and break through that cocoon, as you were saying. It, it is. It's like it, it, you're kind of buried like underground and, and you need to unbury it. And so what I'm giving because I really want people to unbury themselves. Mm. So this is the first step. It's a, um, it's a meditation um, healing. It's a first healing that I give people when they come to me and they really are, want to do it. Because like I said, look, it took you 60, 70, 80, 90 years to create this. Right. <laughs> so it doesn't happen overnight, okay? But it, it can happen in a lot less than 60, 70, 80 years. But you got to start somewhere. So it's a, a small little, like, um, it's a PDF, but it's a little, um, I guess, step mm -hmm. towards clearing it, towards breaking through that cocoon, towards mm -hmm. reconnecting with that beautiful, pure 
essence that we all came into the world with. You know, some people go, oh, no, 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 my life has always been traumatic. And I, I said, no, baby, the world did not bring you into this world without that. We connect. It's still there. And when you connect to that, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. That pure essence is when you remember when we were little, you could believe you could do anything. And nobody could tell you no, because right. you'd say, I can. I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. I can be anything. I could do anything. I mean, in my day, we said we're going to the moon, and we didn't. But we were going to do it anyway, you know, and we did. So nothing is impossible. And that's, you know, that's, that's the first right. step. So that's what I give, I'm giving you is the first step, the first energy clearing. It's, it's a audio in, you know, in, in the um, little manual thing to click, to guide you through your first clearing. And you can listen to it as many times. And, you know, I always say, try to listen to it two times a day if you can do mm -hmm. it or more, right. but the more you do, the more it'll keep clearing. And, and that starts you on your road to unburying yourself. Thank you so much for that, for that generous giving that you're doing with this and that helping people start that, begin that journey. You know, we talk about healing in this group a lot. And so when we're doing this work and even just listening to us speak about it can be so healing because yeah. it gives people permission to move forward. So I'm going to do a prayer to close today. And if you'd like to stick around for that, that would be great. So go ahead and take a nice deep breath. Imagine that you're breathing up through your crown chakra, up in a love light source energy, up into the center of the universe, wherever that is. And as you exhale, let that energy come back down through all layers and levels, down through all the chakras, down through the center of your body, through your feet, down into the crystal core of the earth. As I say these words in the I am for everyone listening, God is all there is. Love is all there is. Light, life, and source energy is all there is. And I recognize right here and right now that I am one with God, love, light, life, and source energy. I'm never, ever separated from this energy. If I feel separated, I know it's a false feeling. And all I have to do is breathe in. Inspiration, inviting spirit in, and exhale gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful to be able to connect with others who also understand that healing is always, always, always available. And when I put myself into that energy, into that flow, then I don't, there's nothing I have to do. There's nothing I have to have. And there's nothing I have to be except that I am that I am. And I allow that to have every single cell, atom, molecule, all the space in between sit up and notice themselves as that, that beautiful I am. I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for all the assistance I receive and I can ask for that assistance at any time. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all those on the other side of this thin veil, my guides, my guardian angels, my spirit helpers for cheering me on from where they are now from saying, yay, you're doing it, you're listening, you're, you're hearing this, you're moving forward, this is awesome. And for those here on the physical plane, because everyone is teaching me, I'm learning from everyone, what I prefer, what I don't prefer, all the contrasts in life that are showing me what is right for me. And I also know that what I'm attracted to naturally has some deeper meaning for me. So I just put myself in the way of learning more about what it is that I'm already attracted to. I'm grateful for the elders in my life who are showing me that it is possible to heal from anything, that it is possible to go through dark times and come out on the other side shining. I'm grateful, so grateful to them for showing me this way, for letting themselves partake of this healing that's available to them and for all those who are seeking and finding. I authorize my subconscious to let it be so, to dissolve any constrictions or contractions keeping me from my highest good. 
I say that it's so, and I let it go, knowing that it's already done. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So it is. Thank you again, Judy, for being here today. I'm so grateful for you um, and for the work you're doing. And and I, I love I love meeting with you all the time. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I'll see you all next week. Thanks again, Judy. Hang out for a minute and we'll talk. Okay. <laughs>